Welcome back to the channel as we get ready to go on another beautiful hike on this gorgeous autumn day. Ah, I do love the autumn. Doesn't matter if it's a bright, beautiful, sunny day and the sun is shining through those leaves and the orange and yellow and reds just seem to glow. Or if it's an overcast day or even raining, the colors just seem to pop up against the darkness. It really is a nice time. If you're new to the channel, what I do here is I record videos of me going on hikes from my point of view. And then I tell a story. But I do that only Monday and Friday. Every Wednesday, I do a video where I don't tell a story. I just let you enjoy the sights and the sounds of what I'm seeing. The birds chirping, the crickets, the fire trucks, the people screaming the murders going on, all of that stuff, you know, life in general. If you're new to the channel and you have not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. I had someone say, I'm a big fan of yours, but they weren't subscribed. Well, subscribe. Just subscribe. And uh, I'm not going to say smash that like button because everybody says that. Smash that like button. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm going to say punch that like button. Just punch it. Punch the like button. If you like this video, if you like any of my videos, just punch that like button. Like, give it a good punch. Punch it so hard that that little thumb up thing just kind of gets knocked off a little bit. Not downward. We don't, we don't want that. But knocked upward. Or just knocked off the screen. That, that actually might be kind of fun. But just punch that like button. But not too hard. Remember, you also don't want to break your screen. So today's story is going to be a short one. All right, stop the celebrating. I know. I just heard all the cheering. Yeah, it's going to be a short one. There's not that much to tell, but it is an interesting story. And it is, it's one of my proudest moments in life. Um, it's a moment that uh, went in a way I didn't expect. The whole thing pretty much was unexpected. But at the end of it, I was kind of proud of myself. I thought to myself, Mike, you're really growing. You're really becoming the person you want to be. So this story takes place in the fall on a very cool autumn day. It was raining outside and the rain was coming out pretty heavily. And I had planned on installing carpet. So I already had the carpet and the color I chose was putrid green to go along with my yellow snot walls. Yeah, I just love that color combination. It just, it's so great. Not really, not really, no. The, the walls were like a, uh, like a light green and the carpet was a dark, dark forest green. Uh, it was a mistake. Yeah, too dark, way too dark. I think in like five years, <laughs> you know, five years later it got replaced with beige. But hey, whatever. That's what I chose, don't know why. I needed to rent some tools and to get some help to install it. Now, I don't have the tools. It's not exactly like I'm installing carpet every day, so why would I have them? So I had to rent them, and the rental facility was right up the street. So great. A couple days before, before this Saturday, I went there, I secured the tools I would need, make sure they have them, so I could just go in there on Saturday and get them and rent them for a couple of hours and be done with it, and that'd be it carpet would be installed I'd be happy we could all move on with our lives but things didn't really go as planned which really if you get to know me over time you'll see that that's pretty much normal nothing ever goes as planned everything just seems to go into pure chaos and fall into shit and this day was no different so my friend shows up to help me install the carpet and First thing we got to do is run up the street and grab the tools we need to get it installed. So we jump into my truck and it is raining outside. Not too heavily, but heavy enough. And I just want to get the tools, get back, get that carpet installed and be done with it. I really didn't want it to be an all day thing. And I've, I was dreading it too, because I knew it was going to be a lot of work. So... We get in my truck and we drive up the street, truly a minute drive, if that. The building, the rental facility was right up the street. Now, this is a state highway, 
And it's a busy state highway, very busy. And on this particular Saturday morning, it was excruciatingly busy. And the building happens to be on the left side of the road, meaning that I will have to wait for traffic to clear in order to turn left. So I was really hoping it wouldn't be that big of a deal. And it turned out to be a big deal because the traffic was endless and would not let me get through. So there I am now sitting on the highway with my turn signal on, just waiting. Five minutes, 10 minutes, two days later. And I'm like getting aggravated. I just wanted to get this done. I don't want to sit here in traffic all day. This place is truly a minute away from me. I should have just driven there, grabbed what I need and gotten back within five minutes and be starting it. Not sitting here in traffic, wasting time, wasting my life. And I'm grabbing that steering wheel with all of this frustration and anger and getting angry like not one of these morons will let me through. And then I noticed something. I see this, uh, it was probably a 1999, 2000 year uh, red Mustang. And the Mustang is behind me and he's coming up towards me and he, he's not slowing down. And I noticed that these two guys, now I couldn't make out how old they were or any of that. All I know is that the driver was not looking at me. He was looking at his passenger. And he was wearing some funny looking hat. So I just could not tell exactly who it was. But what I could tell was that this guy is going to hit me. He is not looking at the road ahead of him. He doesn't even know I'm here, stopped, and have been here since last year. And he keeps coming and I'm like, oh no, oh no, oh no. And then smash, bang, he just smashes right into me. And I'm like, son of a bitch. Now, my truck is a, a very heavy, large truck. I actually still have it, but it's a big, heavy truck. So when the guy bumped into me, my friend did not even feel it. Didn't even know what happened. But here's what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run this down without embellishing it exactly what happened in order as it happened. So there I am waiting to turn left. I see in my rear view mirror this this red Mustang coming right at me. I notice that the driver, who I cannot make out anything about who it is, I just know it's a it seems to be a male, and he's not looking at the road in front of him, hits the back of my truck, and then drives off. Without even a second to even think about it, I jump out of my truck, and I chase after him. This is a main highway. A state highway, a very busy highway. Rain is coming down. He just smashed the back of my truck. And I am now chasing him. And guess what? I caught up to him. I actually ran faster than he was driving. And I ran right up to his side window. And I start smashing that window. And excuse my language if it gets a little too graphic for you. But I start yelling... You pull that fucking car over right fucking now. And that guy turned and looked at me. And that's when I saw who he was. He was probably 65 to 70 years old. And the look on his face. Like as if the devil himself had gotten a hold of him. His jaw dropped. His eyes opened. And he was stunned. And I'm like, you pull this fucking car over right now. You just fucking hit me, mother and he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling over, I'm pulling over. And I'm like, you better pull over. And so he did, he pulled over. And he, he's looking at me like, oh, oh, like just terrified. And I'm like, get out of that car. Get out of that car, I'll pull you out. So he gets out and he's like, all right, man, all right. And I'm like, you just hit the back of my car and then you drove off. Oh, oh, no, no, I, I didn't see you. I didn't even know what happened. And I'm like, you did see, by the way, I should note, when he hit me, he saw it. He reacted to it. 
And that's why he took off. He stepped on the on that gas and he took off and now he's lying about it. So he ends up pulling over into another uh, parking lot that's next to the facility I'm going to, to get out of the street. Meanwhile, there is a cop. I call the police, by the way. <laughs> when I got back into my truck to call the police, my friend's like, what the f*** just happened? I'm like, that guy hit me. He's like, he did? I didn't even feel it. I'm like, yeah, he smashed right in the back of the truck and then he took off. He's like, oh, I didn't know what the hell you were doing. All I know is suddenly there you are and then there you're not. And then you're running down the street chasing after a guy. I was so confused. I'm like, what the f*** is he doing? Well, did he lose it? I'm like, no, no, he hit me. I call the police and there's an officer right up the street. I can see him. And they're like, we'll send an officer. And I'm like, well, great, because he's right here. And he, he, he left. He left. The guy drove away. And I'm like, what the hell? So I call the police again. I'm like, yeah, the, the, the officer didn't even come. He just left. They're like, oh, we'll, we'll turn him around. So the officer comes back. He goes, you know, goes through the whole routine of what exactly happened. I explained. And then he goes, okay, let me go talk to him now. So then the officer comes back to me. He goes, yeah, he's claiming he didn't see you. That um, because it was raining out. He kind of slipped, but he didn't notice that he slipped and hit a car. He, he felt something, but he didn't know. But then when he realized what happened, he was pulling over. And I'm like, well, that's not what happened. Well, there's always two sides to the story. I'm like, no, that's not what happened. I saw him. He wasn't looking. He was talking to his friend, and he hit the back of my truck because he wasn't paying attention. And then he drove off. He was speeding away. He wouldn't have pulled over if I didn't chase him down. Well, I can only go by what you're saying and what he's saying and, and kind of come with a, up with a conclusion between the two. I'm like, well, he's lying. Well, I don't know he's lying. He is lying. So that was really irritating the hell out of me. I, I wasn't arguing with the police officer. I was being friendly, I should say. Uh, I would never be, uh, be that way. Um, but I was inside my head losing it and pretty much doing silent screams. Um, because this driver was lying and the fact that he was trying to get away with it. Now, I should know, he did pay the price. His uh, front axle actually <laughs> looked like it got cracked off and his whole front end was destroyed. Also telling you how hard he hit me because I was parked. So he was going full speed without paying attention and that should have been uh, something that the officer should have picked up on. How does someone just bump into you if they're slowing down? If they slipped because of the rain? I've hydroplaned before and hit the side of the road and didn't hit it that hard. So, of course, I am now very angry. Not very happy. Um, thankfully, the damage on the truck wasn't all that bad. It's just that the bumper was ruined. And um, there was a little <laughs> mark on the side of the truck, but not bad. I think it was like the lower rear quarter panel had some damage from where the, the bumper smashed into it. But now, you know, it's an hour later. It's an hour later. All I was doing was driving up the street to grab the rental tools, a place that was only a minute away and should have been back in less than five minutes and now it's an hour later. So I am just like, Ugh! So I get in there and I rent the tools, get back, install the carpet. It ended up taking the whole day. Didn't finish until probably like 6 o'clock at night. So I had to wait a couple weeks for the police report. Now, I have mentioned this before that I am a filmmaker. And at the time, I was in production, or in pre-production actually, on two new films I was making. So now we cut to when the police report is actually available. And I go to the police station, I grab the report, and it's all full of lies! They used his story over mine! And it's all lies, and I'm like thinking like, this guy should have been fined or whatever, or gotten a ticket for negligent driving, but he lied to the police and the police believed him over me. Why? Because he was older? I was in my 20s and he's in his... 70s so he whatever he says is true 
when he clearly wasn't paying attention. So that's that's how this story ends. Not on a great note, um, but ultimately his insurance company did have to cover the damage to my truck. And I went to this uh, body shop again up the street. Uh, I was living in a decent location that had everything right there. And that body shop was fantastic. And they're like, well, he's paying for it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to cut out that whole quarter panel and get you a new one. And we're going to repaint that whole side of the truck. And we're going to get you a brand new bumper. And the bumper wasn't that bad. I mean, he could have pounded out the dents and fixed it, he said. But he got me a new bumper. So in the end, my truck was like looking like brand new again. All right, so now I want to get to the part as to why this is one of my proudest moments. Back when I was younger, I would hesitate. I would tell myself in my head, I need to do something. I should stand up and say something. I should take action. I should do this. And then I wouldn't. And then I would think about it all day how I could have done it. And what I could have said. And what I could have done. And this moment here was a defining moment because it's, it's when I finally started to stand up and do something just like that. Like taking action when action was needed. And I could have just let that guy drive off and gotten screwed. But I didn't. I didn't even hesitate. I jumped out of that truck and I chased him down. And I, and I will never forget the look on his face when he saw this madman staring in his window while he's speeding away. And probably had the thought of, how the hell is there a guy looking in my window while I'm driving and speeding away? Like, is this guy running 200 miles an hour? But because of that, I probably saved myself some, some trouble. Because... If he had taken off, I would not have been able to get my truck fixed. And I would have had this damage from him, and he would have gotten away with what he gotten away with. I don't even know how he actually was speeding away with that much damage in front of his car. But this whole notion that he was, that he was just going to pull over when he was speeding, and he knew he had to have hit someone. You could see how badly his car was damaged. But here's another reason why I'm so proud of that moment. It has to do with my father. I don't really want to talk too much about my father. I probably won't talk a lot about him. Um, it's a rough history. And for the most part, most of my life, I just haven't spoken to him. And uh, I don't want to get into it, but let's just say he... Um, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just not. But at this point in time, we weren't really speaking, but we were civil. But my father has always looked down upon me, always belittled me, always looked at me as being less than nothing. And he happened to be there. He was actually driving on the road and he saw everything as it happened. He was in the traffic and saw the guy hit my car or my truck, saw me run out of the truck, run after the guy and stopped him. And I, would, I am so happy that my father saw that because, because for most of my life, he looked down upon me, looked at me as being less than nothing. And here he is now seeing who I really am, seeing that I'm someone who takes action, that I just don't sit back and that I make things happen. That day, which, you know, started out as being a pretty bad thing, turned out to be something really good. And I have lived my life that way. I make sure to take action. Instead of just sitting there thinking about what I could have done or what I could do. And basically having a little fantasy of me being the hero or being someone of action while I sit there and do nothing at all. And so that was the moment that changed that. That stopped me from ever doing that and actually standing up and, and, and taking action. And now, a shameless plug. It's Mike with another shameless plug. Today's shameless plug is all about the spooky season. If you're looking for something really spooky, something scary, something creepy, something paranormal, something maybe from outer space, check out ParanormalAliens.com. 
every spooky and scary design that you find here at ParanormalAliens.com has been created by me in my mad scientist lab down in my dank, dark basement. And now, I'm offering it to you. So check out ParanormalAliens.com for something really spooky. Perfect for the Halloween season. ParanormalAliens.com. Check it out today. And now, back to our video.